Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi I will come back, my colleagues. Uh, I'm happy to start this the, the second session or the second lecture. Um, actually, some people uh, asked for the reason of doing this. And some others asked me to sell these lectures or made it uh, paid. Uh, but actually the main purpose of uh, doing such kind of lectures uh, is to help other uh, colleagues find resources or uh, lectures, help them improve themselves. Because that is the problem of many of us. And I myself faced that problem. I didn't find anybody to help me or to take my hand um, to the next step or to improve myself. So I'm doing such kind of lectures in order to uh, uh, give help that I didn't find before. So today's lecture is gonna be about the American system. Most of us think that uh, the American system is uh, that easy so you can choose any topic that you want for because the book is selection. So I can go there to the selection book and choose any topic that I want and then teach to my students. Um, and some others think that uh, uh, it focuses more on um, fluency, means uh, listening and speaking more than reading and writing. Actually, this is a great misunderstanding to the American system, specifically after the Common Core State Standards. So what is the history of the Common Core State Standards and why is it the main core that we have to, uh, to follow in the American system? So a brief look at the uh, Common Core State Standards history uh, we knew that uh, we, uh, in America that we have uh, 15 states. So previously, uh, uh, every state has its own and separate system, educational system. Um, many acts happened before in order to uh, interfere the uh, American system. Uh, acts like no child left to behind, um, and the last act was the Common Core State Standards. Actually, they started to put these standards because they found that the Chinese and Japanese learn English and math faster than the American themselves. So when they uh, investigated their system, they found that every state uh, uh, put different standards and outcomes for the students. So for example, in California, the American system or the, the educational system there is very easy. But uh, uh, in Virginia, this is very hard to be a graduate from a college there. Uh, it's uh, very hard to reach that. So they put some standards in order to be common among all these states. So, uh, many states refused to do that. And that was not an easy decision as the American or the federal government just funds 12% of the education. The rest, uh, 44 uh, fund is funded by localities and uh, 44 by state. So some states consider that this is an interference from the American uh, federal government, from the federal government. So they rejected that interference. And that was a big dilemma, how to solve it. We want to put some standards for all of the states so you can at least achieve these standards. Uh, and at the same time, we don't want to interfere the educational system in each state. So finally, uh, not only educational uh, uh, educationalists that put these standards, actually great minds shared uh, uh, almost the whole community, the whole American community shared to put that kind of standards. 
So they were uh, uh, philosophers, educational professors, uh, uh, educationalist professors, uh, journalists, uh, public figures, all of them shared uh, in putting that kind of standards. So this is about the, uh, the history of the common core state standards. So uh, back again to those people who say that the American curriculum or uh, the American system just focuses on uh, fluency. I'm gonna share the, um, the screen here. So actually, um, we focus more on reading because in reading, we have different kinds of readings. Actually, before coming to that point, we knew that any language is divided into two parts. In order to be easy for us to teach as teachers, we have two parts of the language. The first one is skills, and the second is the language. So in skills, we have uh, uh, two receptive skills and two productive skills. Two receptive skills are reading and listening. Two productive skills are speaking and writing. And the second part of the, any language is the language itself. So we divide language into two parts, grammar and vocabulary, okay? All right, so, uh, and also for those who say that we just focus on fluency and we ignore grammar, we have to finish the grammar book every year. So that means we have to cover the whole topics that are there. So they are about, uh, uh, it differs from uh, one grade to another, but they are about 15 chapters. Uh, we have to cover them all. Okay. All right, so uh, this is about uh, uh, the third point, which is uh, how to divide the language. Let's back again to the second point here, which is the standards. So as you see on the screen, uh, language standards, and you will find here the letter L. Can you see it? Yes. Okay, so uh, L here is the symbol of reading literature. So if we go to study the, uh, uh, the, the standards, we will find the great focus is on reading. So here in reading, we have reading literature. In reading literature, you will find here grade six, grade seven, grade eight. These are the standards that should be covered by the end of the year. Okay, firstly, in reading the literature. Okay, so let's move to the next page. Uh, still six, seven, eight, then nine, 10, 11, 12. Still in reading literature. Then we move to. Um, where is that page? So go back. Yes, previous one. Here is the page that I want. RL reading literature. Okay. Read one, two, three, and so on. Then RI, after RL, reading, liter uh, reading literature, then RI, reading information. So this is nonfiction. So in reading itself, in teaching the scale of reading, we have two kinds, RL and RI. So this is different from any other scale that the American uh, system focuses on. So any other skills uh, is just, uh, we have one uh, aspect to focus on. So for example, here is writing. We have just writing. 
who don't have uh, two kinds of writing. And then speaking and listening, they are together. They have the same uh, standards, SL, speaking and listening. They are put under uh, uh, one skill. So the great focus of the American system is on reading with different aspects of reading, reading literature, which is uh, fiction, and reading uh, for information, which is uh, nonfiction. Uh, then, how to start uh, reading for literature? Yes? Uh, reading information, both fiction and non-fiction or non-fiction? No, only? reading information means uh, uh, this is a non-fiction, a literal language. So, and this is what we start teaching the students, the differences between uh, figurative language and literal language. Okay, so in order to understand uh, uh, reading literature and reading information, so we teach them that uh, uh, figurative language, we use, uh, we don't describe things as they are. So we can exaggerate, we can uh, uh, make similes and stuff like that. But in the uh, um, literal language, uh, we don't use uh, uh, figures of speech. And then we go deeper in each uh, uh, branch of them. So uh, we teach them in figurative language. We use, uh, you know, shampoo, the acronym shampoo. S-H-A-M-P-O-O. -O. So S for simile. Uh, do you want me to go further to explain what are these? Yes, figures yes, of speech? Yes. OK, simile. Uh, I say, for example, Ahmed is brave like a lion. So here, here I compare two things using words, okay? Then H for hyperbole. Hyperbole means exaggeration. I'm hungry, I can eat a camel. A is alliteration. Alliteration is a repetition of uh, 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 consonants in a sentence. Uh, so we can see it in uh, tongue twisters. And I think most of you know tongue twisters. So the repetition of the, uh, of the consonant is an alliteration. For example, uh, uh, she sells seashell. Uh, then, um, uh, metaphor. Metaphor is exactly the same like simile, but the only difference is that we don't use words. So I'm going to use the same example. Uh, Ahmed is brave like a lion. So this is simile. And metaphor, Ahmed is a lion. I compare two things without using words. This is metaphor, okay? P is personification. And personification, I uh, give the characteristics of human beings to things. For example, the trees are dancing. The sun is smiling. This is personification. I treat things like people or persons. Okay. Then O, the first O is onomatopoeia. Onomatopoeia means to use words that are derived from sounds like roar. Roar is the sound of lion and it's derived from his sound. So like crack, zoom, and so on. This is onomatopoeia. Then oxymoron. Oxymoron is to use two uh, uh, contrary words combine it together. So for example, climb down. Uh, uh, 
grand tea, sword fish, and also cat fish. So uh, these two words that look uh, uh, or that look have contradiction is called oxymoron. This or all these uh, uh, figures of speech we use in the figurative language. In the literal language, we only use facts and pure facts. So for example, in writing a report, I cannot use hyperbole to exaggerate. So we, that's why we call it literal language. We use exactly what we mean. This is the first thing we teach at the beginning of the year in order to understand or differentiate between a readings and in writing too. The second thing, uh, we focus on elements of literature. This is specific for literature. So elements of literature, uh, like, can, can, can yes? I ask a question? Yes? Uh, you said that RL, reading literature, this is figurative language. And the RI, reading information, this is nonfiction, yeah? Yes. These two? Yes. Oh, okay, thank you. Welcome. Okay, so uh, another thing, and um, this thing is very important, which is elements of literature that we start focusing on at the beginning of the year, uh, like characters, settings, plot, point of view, and so on. Things that we use in literature in order to understand how to analyze a text or the, uh, the fiction text. And that helps them uh, uh, when they know about the, the background of the text, how to analyze the text, uh, whether it's a play, a story, short story, a novel, and so on. And then later on, when we teach them how to write a, a critique about or, or a book review, it helps them a lot. So they write about the setting, about the characters, about the plot, how the writer develops, or develops the plot, and so on. Uh, uh, these are the uh, major things that we use at the beginning of the year. Then, how to choose the topics. So most of us as teachers of the American curriculum, unfortunately, uh, misunderstand how to choose. So we just go and choose any topic that is suitable for me. Some teachers uh, choose only teaching poetry. Some others choose only teaching uh, uh, fiction. So actually, in every quarter, we teach fiction, nonfiction, and a poem. Uh, this is because in the American system, we don't have two semesters we have four quarters. So in each quarter, we teach fiction, and nonfiction, and a poem in order to cover all areas of reading. Then I'm, now I'm gonna teach, uh, or I'm gonna share a file uh, about how to distribute or how to choose, how to select uh, your topics. So you can see that file. Yes. Okay, so this is a yearly file of grade 10. Uh, I made it three years ago, so we're not using it right now because it will be changing the books. So first, I choose the whole standards uh, that would, we should cover in that year. Then I divide them into uh, 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 four quarters. So every quarter uh, in reading literature, I'm gonna cover uh, one, two, three, four standards, as you see here. In reading, uh, reading I, reading L and reading I, okay? Then writing, speaking and listening and language, okay? And then I go to the book that I select from. I don't select randomly. Now, I see that standard, for example, 
and choose the topics that cover that standard. Because this is a big issue in the American system. You have a very huge book of, uh, full of selections, uh, uh, fiction and nonfiction, and it's huge. So how can you choose the topics there? Actually choose them accordingly with the common course, the standards that we have to cover this year. So we divide them into four quarters and in each quarter, we choose the topics that are going to cover these standards. And that's all for me today. Do you have any questions? No. So guys, any questions? No, thank you. Go ahead. I, I finished. Uh, you finished the, the session? Yeah, the session is over right now. So do you uh, have any okay. questions? Yes. yes. Hmm. Uh, OK. Uh, can you tell us uh, the names of the books of selections like Hulk McDougall? So we have McGraw-Hell, we have uh, Hold, we have Selections. Uh, there are many, many books there. Uh, so this is according to your uh, to your school, the school that you're working there. You're welcome, Ms. Uh, uh, okay, uh, those uh, books cover from grade 6 to grade 12, yes? Not before uh, the grade 6? Uh, sorry, again? Uh, th these books, uh, like Micro Health Selections and uh, Micro Google? No, 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 no. Uh, from K to 12. So let me show KG1? you something. Uh, K1 and 2? Uh, just a second. Okay. Uh, I want to show you something. Let's go a little bit back. Yes, look at this. K to okay, five, five first, K to five. Here are the standards that you need to cover in K kindergarten, in KG. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. okay. So they cover the whole educational system from K to 12. Uh, okay. Uh, can you explain uh, how to teach uh, a reading passage from a selection? Uh, how to uh, teach reading the, that needs another session and another huge session because we have <laughs> hundreds of uh, methods to teach yes. and this is away from the main target of our session our session today is about the american uh, uh curriculum how to teach it generally in uh, uh very wide lines okay but how to teach, the, the, this is a very uh, big topic. So maybe inshallah later, I'm gonna make another lecture about it. Uh, but for the next lecture, inshallah, I'm gonna uh, uh, tell you how to get the course material in the 15, uh, not 15, uh, two weeks, 14 days. When you apply uh, for Coursera, you have to wait for two weeks, right? Yes. Inshallah, I'm going to teach you how to get the course material within these two weeks. So you can finish them uh, until they open the assignment for you, then you're ready to upload your assignments directly. So you don't waste time. Uh, what about those who didn't uh, sign in Coursera? Uh, you can sign now. No problem. Uh, do you have uh, a link or should I search on Google? Uh, actually, I made a full lecture about that. So, uh, are you really are you, on this group? Uh, which group? Which WhatsApp uh, group? Creative. Creative. Okay, creative I'm gonna English. I'm gonna share I'm gonna share the link again. I shared it already there, and I'm gonna share share it again. Actually, I put all my links uh, on uh, professional development uh, WhatsApp group, and I upload it on my channel on YouTube. So inshallah, I'm gonna send you the link. And uh, if you like it, send you can it. go and subscribe there. Okay, sure. Okay. So any other questions?
Uh, yes, please. Yes. Um, yeah, I've just started teaching in an uh, American school. Okay, so I'm teaching grade two. Concerning some uh, strategies, or uh, let me say, concerning the lesson itself, after the reading part, we have the comprehension skills, like visualize the inflection, uh, inflectional endings and this stuff. Should mm -hmm. I like, um, let the students know about during the reading part or should it be before the reading part? I, I don't know, I'm still confused about it. All right, so you don't make students know about the strategies that you're following. You just apply the strategy. Students don't have to understand yeah. what you're doing. So you just, mm -hmm. they, they need just to understand the instructions given to them, but not the strategy itself. Yes, so they don't know, they don't have to know the name of the strategy. No, 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 not at all. They should just ask. Yeah, so they don't need to understand the strategy or to know about the strategy itself, uh, but they all what they need to understand is the instructions only. Okay. Oh, right. uh, what are the instructions? Of any activity that you want to uh, to do. If you want to do an activity, so you start giving the instructions and be sure that the instructions are very clear to them. But you don't tell them what strategy, what strategy that you're applying or using. So we, I don't say today we're gonna uh, apply jigsaw puzzle. Uh, today we're gonna use station rotation mode. No, they don't need to know that. They just uh, need to understand the instructions. What should they do? Okay. Yeah. All right. And another question. I didn't understand the part where you talked about groups and this. These things you, you just said. I'm just a member of the CELTA hold, uh, holders. I've yes. In the link in that group. So, uh, yeah, what about the other things that you talked about? What about Coursera? I didn't understand that point. All right. So, uh, did you attend the first lecture? No. All right. So, uh, do you follow us on? Uh, uh, actually, you will find the, uh, the link shared there, uh, YouTube link. I put it there on CELTA holders. So are you in any of our WhatsApp groups? No. All right, so- I've just uh, joined the holders, yeah. All right, so <laughs> could you please text me there? Yeah, of course. Okay, I'm gonna send you uh, the link of my channel. Inshallah, you will find all these courses uh, uploaded there. Uh, I didn't know that you have already, uh, sorry. Uh, I didn't know that you have already started sessions. You told me that you had the session before and i thought that this is your first one so no. did we miss a lot this is my second uh, lecture the first lecture is uploaded there on my channel and it's there on celta holders and if you're following us on our whatsapp group which is professional development you will find the link there uh, professional development this is a whatsapp group this is yeah this is my whatsapp group uh, so, um, where did you join? Uh, Thank so you, Ms. Sara. Ms. Sara shared a link here in chat. Can you see it? Uh, so, in chat, yeah. you will find the link of the first uh, lecture. And anyway, so uh, where did you join the, or where did you, where did you know about the lecture? C creative, creative English creative. teachers. I'll share it there too. Okay. Okay. So, any other questions? Uh, thank you very much. You're always welcome. So, I was very happy, extremely happy to be among you today. And I hope that you learned something. Yes, yes. Uh, your session was very beneficial, really. And, and we need the more sessions, uh, but... but uh, if, if you have time, if you have time, we Show. can pick another one tomorrow, if you have time. Uh, no, not tomorrow, because tomorrow we are starting our uh, uh, new academic year here in Saudi Arabia. So uh, it won't be easy for me to conduct a lecture. Okay. Can, can we attend with them online? But I can't because they are students there. Uh, I'm yes, going to teach yes. students. Uh -huh. Okay, so okay, best of luck. You're always welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Scott.
Thank you, Ms. Sara Muhammad. And thank you for all of you. Thank you, Ms. Emma. Thanks for all of you. And inshallah, I'm waiting for you in the next lecture. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.